even when I'm down. Got my head in the clouds and my feet on the ground. I got big dreams. Yeah, we're going to make those big dreams come true here at the Genius Lab. This is Toby, your guide through these podcasts. Release your shit and reclaim your power. We're getting excited here. I am. This is number 15 uh, on my new book, uh, Release Your Shit and Reclaim Your Power. I'm doing all of the worksheets for the first workshop on Kauai. I'm getting very jacked about that. It's going to be big. It's going to be fun. And stay tuned. More to come. So uh, today we're going to talk about expectations versus reality. <laughs> this is where when you start making the shift from your shit life into your realized realizing your greatness um there's a there's there's a time right in between it's kind of like when you look at a trapeze artist you know they're swinging they've got their hands on something they know they need to get to the next thing and it's all about timing and there's this moment when they let go of their bar they haven't quite gotten the grip on the new bar yet and it can be kind of frightening until they get a firm grip and everything's fine and i guarantee you with this program you are going to get the grip and everything's going to be fine but the in-between time can be a little little messy okay so expectations can be one of the biggest saboteurs of success and creating your dreams i mean that's how i opened the chapter um you remember years ago there was a movie called the secret and everybody's in a big uproar about the law of attraction the law of attraction all you got to do is cut out some pictures in a magazine paste them on a board put it up in your house and all this stuff will come true and uh and uh, oh, one of the guys, I can't remember his name offhand, but uh, he ended up buying a house that he had on his vision board. But then like five years later, he was arrested for killing four people and things didn't work out so well. But uh, anyway, that's beside the point. Um, the bottom line is expectations don't get bridged by just putting a fucking vision board on the wall and not doing anything. The other thing that the secret seemed to seem to think was if you say certain things and if you if you concentrate and put your mind in certain. Now, these are all true, but not on their own. OK, you got to do something. OK, so the thing that the that, that I thought uh, was really good about the secret was it opened up the, the me metaphysical pathway. The thing that was completely fucked about it was that they made it sound like you didn't have to do anything. And the whole deal is execution is the key, right? So you can sit and look at your vision board all fucking day long, but if you don't get your ass out of the couch and do something, you're going to be really disappointed. And uh, you know that's basically what happened as the movie fizzled out uh, quickly. Well, granted, a few people made a shit ton of money on it. Good for them, maybe. Um, but fundamentally, I think that it, it, it did a uh, disservice for the law of attraction, uh, which is a real thing. Uh, there's another very popular book uh, called The Bible that says faith without works is dead. Now, I'm not a big Bible thumper at all. I was at one point in my life. But uh, that is one piece of wisdom that I agree with 100%. You can sit down and dream your you know, mind to oblivion. But if you don't do something about it, nothing's going to happen. So this is the place of action. Okay. Sometimes when we start on our visualizations, it can be kind of depressing because you can actually shift your consciousness into this place, which is your dream, you know, la la land, right? And everything is cool and groovy there. And then the reality that you see when you come out of your meditation is like, well, shit, I just want to meditate all the time because it's way better there than it is here. Um, you know, the, so I, I hear this a lot where people go, God, my journeys are so powerful and it feels so good to be in that state of, of, of highly resourceful, you know, the highly resourceful state and, and, and having things happen. But then when I come out of the visualization, it's like, oh, man, this shit's hard. <laughs> 
However, I will tell you this, it gets easier and easier and easier, which is why consistency in your visualization is really, really important. Okay. Do it every day, five minutes a day. I don't care if you can do it 20, even better, but feel it real, feel everything about your, the life that you want to create and let it happen. And then do the things that you need to do to make it happen. Use your resources. Okay. Uh, <laughs> We all want what we want and we want it right away, but sometimes there's a, a, a differentiation between our expectations versus our ordinary reality situation. You know, I, I remember coming out of a visualization one time where I was imagining this beautiful love relationship and everything is fine. And I come out of my, out of my meditation and, and my wife at the time is like, okay, are you done with your meditation? There's a bunch of shit we got to do. And I'm like, Oh, what happened to that loving, beautiful woman that was taking such good care of me and nurturing me in my visualization? I, and, you know, you can't control other people. You can only control your response and, and your frame of mind. But what I find is people around you start to come in. They either, they either fall away or they come into, to, into synchronize with you. And it's really a beautiful thing. So, um, you can't, again, you can't control people with it, but you can inspire people with it. Okay. Um, it's really hard when you're, you know, in your visualization, you're driving this really nice Maserati and you have, you look at your checking account and you have, uh, you know, a hundred thousand dollars in there and you look at your savings account and you got 400,000 and, uh, and then you get back to ordinary reality and you got 30 bucks in your checking account. <laughs> it's like, ah, so, uh, but stay with it. Everything starts with a thought. Remember that. And it starts in the imagining uh, and visualizing place and then becomes real. Okay. I mean, think of anything in your house. Think of this microphone that I'm, t that I'm talking through right now. So somebody decided they were going to make a microphone and they were going to make their microphone better, different, or, or have certain features other than other mics that were out there. Cause why make the same thing everybody else is making? So they had an, ima they imagined that they could do it by having the condenser be a certain way and the screen be a certain way, so on and so forth. And somebody else may have thought about this, um, shock mount that's holding the mic. You know, it all started with a thought. Then they went to a design. Then they actually started to manufacture it. And now they sell them. You know, it's pretty cool. But they all had to do something to make it happen. But remember, there were probably a lot of bumps and bruises along the road in order to make the microphone work the way they wanted it to, differentiate it from every other one out there, and come in in a manner that put them at the price point that they wanted to be at. This particular mic is not expensive. It happens to be really good. Um, and so... I was really glad I was able to find it. A friend of mine who's a, a, a sound nut and very detail oriented said, dude, <laughs> your days of spending thousands of dollars for microphones are over. You got to get this one. And, and I was thrilled. And it has been, a, I've had this thing for like 15 years, maybe longer. And uh, anyway, it's awesome. So, but the bottom line is getting back to my point is everything starts with a thought. Everything starts by visual visualizing the end game. Then rewind, find out where your starting point is and start working your way through it. Okay. It's really, really powerful. It can get really, really discouraged, S discouraging expectations versus ordinary reality is called the gap. And it's really powerful and can be really frustrating. <laughs> and, uh, so it, it, Sometimes it seems like, like, how can there be such a difference though? Like, how can I think about these really amazing things when I'm so far from creating them? Well, <laughs> good news. That is your ability to create and manifest. And it is really awesome that you can do it. It also means that you might have other resources that you need. Okay. For example, think about, uh, Bill Gates and Paul Allen. They created the coding for MS-DOS and that was kind of their big breakthrough. And, um, 
but they couldn't produce it and they couldn't get it to, you know, all the computer companies that required a team. And then once they got it up and rolling, all the bugs and all the shit that happened and or spe specific applications on and on and on, um, th it required more people. So depending on the difference between the gap of, of your vision and, and your gap to ordinary reality, you may need some assistance. OK, it may not be something that you can do all by yourself. For me, I like to do things myself. I don't like all my friends that are like big, huge honchos. They work so hard and they're always so stressed out. I personally have not found a way to not be that way. So I've downscaled things. I like a more simple life. I like fewer moving parts. I like to be in control of what I can control and not have a bunch of things around that I can't. Um, but that's my choice. And I'm probably not going to ever drive a Lamborghini Countach, but um, that's okay. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather like sit out on my deck Sunday and have an espresso instead of worrying about what the stock market's doing. So anyway, so I, the other thing I want to talk to you about is the accountability factor. Okay. So, so you, you have a vision and you decide you're going to move forward with creating something or manifesting something. Maybe it's a new house. Maybe it's a new car. Maybe it's a new relationship. It doesn't matter. But once you commit to that, you're rallying forces in the universe. Now, this is going to sound kind of metaphysical for you guys uh, who maybe are, are more self-empowerment dudes, but just hear me out, okay? You call into action the forces of the universe. You rally. It's quantum physics. Energy attracts like energy. When you have a vision, when you have a visualization and you spend time uh, uh, solidifying that vision, okay? Then what happens is you create a magnetic field around that vision that draws to it the things that are needed for it to create. Okay, so this is the part where it gives you ideas and you have to go do something about it, like you have to hire a team or you have to get certain products. Um, and and so so you are accountable. Now, the other thing you want to be pay a lot of attention to is who is around you and the kind of atmosphere you surround yourself with. OK, I remember, um, you know, one of the things I do on this program, um, the, you know, the the purpose of the book is to help you to understand how to get rid of the shit that's in your way and then how to take your power. Right. So so you're taking your power is your accountability factor. OK, doing what you need to do and following through. Um, and it can, you know, for those of you who are coming on the retreat, oh, my God, it's so hilarious. This is why I do the eight weeks of coaching afterwards, because I remember being at uh, a very, very powerful work, a workshop uh, retreat with my friend Maladoma from Africa. And I remembered everybody in the group was, it was a grief ritual to be exact, really powerful. People came with a lot of problems and a lot of challenges and they were eradicated and freedom was, you know, achieved and people were dancing kumbaya and, you know, all happy and joyous. And it was really cool to be around so many like-minded people and to be able to just immerse myself in this cultural bliss. Uh, and then, I, then I went home and at the time I had a, I had a chain of coffee bars and, and a restaurant. And I remember, I remember going into the cafe going, everything's cool. And, and somebody comes walking in and they're like, Hey, what time do you close on Saturday? I'm like four o'clock. I was in here at two. The, your, your gal was, was cleaning up and she wouldn't serve me. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. And then two, three, four customers later, somebody said, I had a really bad drink while you were gone. Oh my God, it was terrible. The milk was burnt and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh shit, give me a gun. I just am going to blow my head off so I can stay in La La Land and not come back to this craziness. Big gap, big shock, fucked up. But the thing is, it helped me instigate a new vision for my business, how I was going to manage it, how I was going to do some quality control so that I could continue to live the dream and put the businesses up for sale so I could do other stuff that I like doing better, like what I'm doing now. So, um, 
when you have your vision, you're going to rally forces around you that are going to help you. Some of those will be human. Some of those will be energetic. Some of them will be circumstances. Um, my buddy CJ, he and I run a nonprofit together called Hear the Hope. Check it out at hearthehope.org. And we help people's, make people's dreams come true through songs of hope. And we set people up with uh, celebrities and they get to either write a song or we write a song and they play it. And uh, it's really fun to watch these mostly kids, but we've also worked with some veterans uh, with post-traumatic stress. And it's, it's so fun to watch them have their dream come true and then to have this fully produced music, you know, and on and on and on. So the bottom line is once you get a vision of what you want to create, you rally the, the energy around it. Energy attracts like energy. It's quantum physics. An electromagnetic field is produced by energy. Energy is frequency. The vibration creates an electromagnetic field which pulls like energy, okay? Energy attracts like energy. So when you're pissed off and shitty, guess what kind of energy you attract? Have you ever had somebody pull out in front of you on the freeway and you're like, God damn it, why did I do? And then like all day long, people are pulling in front of you? <laughs> That's the law of attraction. Um, conversely, sometimes, you know, you just get into the groove where you can't miss and everything goes well for you. So take the time to look at what your expectations are and look at how they differ from your ordinary reality. Create a strategy, which we'll get to in a future chapter, to get yourself from where you are to where you want to be. Look at the things you need to do to get there and ask yourself what resources you need in order to accomplish what it is you are accountable for. Okay, that's it. I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you for listening to my podcast and keep looking up. <laughs>